friends, welcome to another Sunny Side Design video. I am Michelle. And I'm Steph. And today is week three of our one room challenge. And we're here in Steph's bathroom. Bathroom here, the, the um, tub's around. Yes. That's what's behind me. So today we're gonna start, and this week, we're focusing on tiling the shower. So the first thing we're gonna start with is applying our red guard. So stay tuned. Also, we just wanted to add this little disclaimer that we are not professionals. However, we are not. <laughs> this video will show you that anyone can do this. So this video is geared toward the beginner and we've done a lot of research before doing this project. So you're going to learn a lot of the tips that we have learned and you'll learn from our own experience. So you are quickly going to realize that I'm really not using Red Guard. I said that because that is the brand that I have most commonly heard of, but I'm actually using Mape Aqua Defense, and basically they're the same type of product. They're both waterproof membranes, which are basically a liquid rubber that you need to apply on the shower walls prior to tiling. Even though the substrate we're working with is water resistant, adding this waterproof layer really is crucial. Contrary to popular belief, ceramic, tile, and grout by themselves are not waterproof. So water can still penetrate through the cement-based grout and eventually get into that substrate. Be sure to follow the specific directions for the brand that you're using. Per this Aqua Defense, you're supposed to use a paintbrush to apply this waterproof membrane to the joints of the shower and allow to dry before adding the rest of the membrane to the remaining shower walls. And to do that, you just use a 3 8 inch nap roller and apply it on just like you're painting a wall. So it is key, again, to follow the directions, make sure that this product is dry before adding the second coat and then it also um, read the label to know exactly how long it needs to dry before adding tile. We opted to tile the back of the niche first, not only to get it out of the way, but the subway tile will form a border around this accent tile. So this tile was also a special order item. If we messed this part up, we wouldn't be able to order replacement tile in time to stay on top of our time schedule for the one room challenge. So luckily, installation went well and we didn't even break any or need to use either of the two extra tiles. Today we've got our super fun Newport Scale Beach tiles and we've marked center on the tile with this frog tape and then center on our niche and then that is going to help us know right where to place our first tile. And we're gonna work out so that our, our design is nice and centered. To ensure we placed the first tile into position correctly, we traced the tile with a pencil. Then use a 1 8 notch trowel to apply the mortar. So you're gonna spread the mortar beyond the pencil marks or a couple inches beyond the size of the tile you're using. Then you're gonna use the notched end to drag through all of the mortar. This is going to create the even amount of mortar behind each tile. Also, let's just ignore my sloppy job here. <laughs> this was really my first time tiling and it was really hard in this small little niche. So just know the job got done, but I was kind of sloppy, but I did get better the more I did it. Next, you're going to firmly press the tile into position and use spacers between each tile to maintain consistent grout joints throughout the whole shower. Then repeat this process to install each remaining tile. I also used the rubber float to make sure that each of the tiles were pressed in the same distance. I pushed a little too hard the first go around and I had the mortar squishing through each of the tiles so we just took a toothpick and kind of picked out each of these spaces so that there would be room for the grout when we got to that step so the other tiles I didn't push in quite as hard and that they were okay the 
center of the tub is. We're going to start with a subway tile centered on that and we're also using painter's sticks, stir sticks, as a spacer so that we have the equal amount underneath our first row. Now you'll want to make sure that you're working with level guides. So our tub was actually level, which is why we just used these stir sticks on the tub surface. If that is not the case for you, you can um, hang a temporary cleat on the wall in a level position, just secure it with some screws, and then you'll insta install the first couple of rows directly on top of that cleat, and then once those tiles are secure, you can remove that cleat and then continue to install the tiles below those rows. You'll also notice here that we have the center of the wall marked in pencil to help us keep this design centered and looking good the whole time. So we've also marked the tile so we can line up the center mark on the tile with the center mark on the wall. Hopefully make it a little bit easier for us. It's also a good idea to take a measuring tape and measure the amount on both sides of that tile just to make sure that it really is centered. Once you have it in place, you can go ahead and start installing the other tiles on that first row. Just make sure that the stir sticks are staying level and you're using spacers in between each tile to make sure that the grout joints are going to be equal. After the first row has been installed, you'll just repeat this process all the way up. And you'll just stagger, we're using a brick pattern, and really the key is to just mark that first tile that you lay in the center and then make sure that it's centered on the wall before installing the rest of that row. This is about four hours worth of work. The niche obviously took more time to do, but we're off to a good start. So the tile I chose did not come in a bullnose, which would have covered this edge here. So we needed to use some Schluter. And we also went back to the store before cutting this just to make sure we knew what we were doing because, you know, we're not professionals. And some of the brands, well, this one does too, but because of this color that I chose, it was special order. But they actually have little pieces that you can put on the corner that makes like perfect corners but because ours was special order we're on this time crunch with our challenge we just opted to do 45 degree angle cuts and we just used a hacksaw for that so we have them all taped into place just to make sure that we have the right measurements and then we just plan to grout in between all of those and you know they're not perfect but they're pretty good and when we were at the store, their samples weren't perfect either, so that made me feel better. <laughs> but it's gonna be great. So we're gonna place this tile a little bit in from the wall to leave a little bit of a grout space that will butt up with the Schluter. And that it's over here, so it'll look something like that. To keep the pattern consistent, we've marked the middle of the niche and we're going to place a tile on each side of that. And again, we're just going to hold up a piece of Schluter to make sure that we've got enough space in there before securing it into place. Now that the mastic has been notched to the right thickness, we're ready to put the Schluter on. We're going to put this flush to this tile and it will cover that front edge of the tile. We're going to make sure we have equal space at both ends and then you'll see that the mastic pushes through and then we'll apply more mastic on top that in place.
now we're just putting a little more mastic on top so that we can place our tiles into position. And I'm using just a putty knife here because the area is so small. Then you'll use the notched end of the trowel and again just prepare it for the tiles and then you can lay them into place. Now we're going to use our wet saw to cut this angle piece out of the tile to fit around the corner of the Schluter. Well, by this point you know we're not professionals. We were cutting this tile from the back side, so the edges are pretty nice that way, but cut too far this way. So this time we taped it off with frog tape so we can cut it from the, having the navy facing up and we'll get a much better cut. That worked much better. You can see how crisp it is. So we're gonna do that on the other side and we'll have a nice cut tile. So again, here the bottom tile is the first one we did. We cut from the back side, which, you know, turned out nice, but it left us these lovely marks on the front. So this is the one that we used frog tape on and we got a nice corner there this time. While we're talking about tools, you will also need a diamond bit hole saw to make the circular cuts to go around the shower fixtures. And being a first time user, it was so easy to use and it's very well my new favorite tool. We're almost finished with this tile work. We are going to work on getting the side pieces of Schluter up. I'll show you what we've done right now to get it ready. So we've put the tiles up like a dry fit with the spacers and made a pencil mark where the tile will be. And then we've also done the same thing with the Schluter. So the tile comes to here and the Schluter will be there. And now we'll know where we need to secure that into place and we can get our remaining tiles in there and finish this up. Now we're going to press the Schluter into place and we're going to line it up with our pencil mark and we're going to clean up the extra mastic after the fact because this is a messy job. And I'm going to use a putty knife to just push it into place. And then we'll put another layer of mastic on top of that. Guys, I'm not a professional, remember this. But anybody can do it. Now we're ready to add the few remaining pieces of tile to finish this wall. Although any beginner can tackle this project, it's definitely not for the faint at heart. Plan several days to completely install the shower. I'm sure professionals are quicker, but if you take the time, you're going to go about this process smoothly and you're going to get great results. We hope you liked this tutorial and learned a few preliminary steps to make this process go smoothly. Please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our tutorials and make sure to come back next Thursday as we will show you how to grow the shower. And as always here at Sunnyside Design, we hope to bring your home to the sunny side of the street.